quickly with Jesus' joy, I'd like us to honor this man of God today. Um, in my upbringing, I learned to honor men of God. Hallelujah. Especially according to scripture, those who are laboring. Amen. Because you can be, you know, there are people who call everyone men of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are difference between a pastor, a preacher, and a man of God. That you're a pastor doesn't mean you're a man of God. That you're a preacher doesn't mean you're a man of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A man of God is actually someone that is ordained and specially selected and assigned. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You know, so uh, this is minister's conference. We may have the time to look into some of those things a little bit. Amen. But I, I want to believe that this is a man of God. The Lord has used him to labor over this, this nation. And um, his, his proof of ministry is evident among us. His word has been honored by the Lord. I'd like us to receive the ministry of Dr. Prophet Thomas Manton. Can we give Jesus praise? as he comes to the podium. Let's celebrate the grace of God upon his life. Please keep clapping for him until he makes his way here. Give Jesus praise, give Jesus praise, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. Now let's give Jesus one. <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. Karante shaha masahan jehosa. I have something very good in my spirit for the body of Christ. Lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord and let's pray for God to begin to speak to the earth once again. There is something amazing that's about to happen, even in the midst of all of the storms and all of the warfares and all the problems that have been happening. God's about to pour out his spirit on all flesh, and we're going to begin to see the greatest days we've ever seen in our lifetimes because... The Bible says the latter house will be greater than the former house. He also said the silver and the gold is mine. He said, I have a destiny for you that you'll stand before kings and not just before common people. See a man diligent in his business. The same will stand before great ones, not just before mere common people. Lift your hands. Promotion comes not from here or there. It comes ultimately from the Lord. If you can pay the price to walk with him and show him the reality of the substance of your faithfulness and obedience to him, then things will progress for you. And I see many people that have not done that. Therefore, they have to wait another season, another cycle to go around. But that's kind of sad but I want to talk to the people that are ready to be activated for a greater dimension. Uh, are you here today? Are you listening to me here? I want to talk to people that are ready to go to the next level and the next dimension in God. And the Lord's going to begin to bring promotion from all kinds of places. Lift your hands. Are you tired yet? If you're tired, then let me pray the Holy Ghost fire on you. Pray in the spirit just for one thirty second. Karanta da sha. Let's focus on the boss. Let's focus on the mind of God. Let's focus on him. He's worthy. To him alone be longs all the praise. To no one else, you know. He is the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. And look at the price that Jesus paid for us. Look what he did for us. Are we willing to go that far? Remember the scripture said that he could have called 12 legions of angels and said enough? And in one second, they would have pulled the crown of thorns off his head 
they would have pulled his hands off of the nails at his feet and put him there and everything would have came back together and he'd walk on. But he didn't do it. He stayed there faithful, even obedient unto death. In the same way that we want to speak to people about promotion and prosperity and business and abundance and uh, lifting up of their life, in the same message needs to be the other side of the sword of discipleship and consecration and sacrifice. Because if you're not willing to sacrifice for the Lord, how is he going to lift you up in his hand? Can he trust you? Take your seats, Gubbler. Take your seats. I prayed for a whole year one time, almost a whole year. Can you believe it? Every single day, over 16 hours a day, I was in prayer. I could tell you the year, but it was quite some time ago, so I won't say it now. Lest you think that I'm like Methuselah in age, okay? <laughs> but I'm younger than him. <laughs> he lived to 969, but I'm younger than him, okay? I'm a few minutes more than a millennial who was born in 2000. Hello? But I'm younger than Methuselah 969. I'm somewhere in between the two. So you can figure that out. Try to, try to guess. But I look very young, yes? Praise the Lord. Thank God for his grace. I prayed almost for an entire year. This prayer was in my spirit. Lord, I want you to be able to trust me. Lord, I want you to be able to trust me. I want you to be able to trust me. And after a long time of praying, crying, interceding, many hours, <sighs> what a testimony that time of prayer I have. So many open visions I had. I'll share in another time. But the, the, Lord, the Lord pulled that prayer away from me one day, and I went to pray it again. He said, son, you're done. I, I, I've, I've accepted, I've accepted, I can trust you. From, I want to tell you from then, the whole world opened up to me. Like a hundred countries, on all six continents of the world, everything began to open, doors began to fly open from everywhere. Too much to do, and many I've left undone. I've not been able to do all of the things that were open to me. Lift your hands. When God wants to bless you, he'll give you too much to do, not too little. When the power of God sees that you're faithful and you've gained his trust, everything will open to you in every good realm and arena. And some people, it's like they're still waiting for something. Let me tell you, the man who has the grace of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the favor of God, the open doors, you're not waiting. Everybody's waiting for you, and you can't get everywhere. Can I tell you that same kind of fire and power needs to flow in the realm of your business life? Lift your hands. My business, my business, my business, my business life. Whatever it is you do, really, you're a brand. Your uniqueness is your significance. Your similarity to another is never good Ultimately, because between you and that person, the other person will say, I'm the one that's special, not you. They'll vote for themselves. So you want to make yourself, you want to make your branding, your image, the packaging, if we can call it. Let me use some scary words in the church that the church really doesn't understand these words too much. Branding, media, marketing strategy, business plan, hello, plans of action. But what did God say in Habakkuk 2.2? Write the vision down and make it plain. For what reason? That others can read it and then run with it. Can I tell you, nobody can do anything unless you give them an instruction. You can't even do anything yourself unless God gave you an instruction. You know, you have to know what you need to be doing, and it's the Lord himself who give you the instructions. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I need your instructions. Talk to me. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Put it in my heart what it is, your vision. I was thinking this morning, a visionary will just speak and people will come alive. 
because there's passion in that person to lead people somewhere. The world is, is somehow full of leaders, but yet has a lack of leadership because many people have not positioned themselves. Hello? I'm going to give you something here. If you, if you position yourself correctly, everything in the universe will begin to beckon at your call. Everything will begin to move and shake based on where you want to step toward next. Lift your hands right now. Now, I'm the Kingdom Aerobics instructor. I'm, the, I'm a gymnast, amen. I was a bodybuilder before I got saved. I'm in shape, so I like to tell people, lift your hands, stand up, sit down, praise the Lord. Come on. Some people just sit there like this. <sighs> Have you been rained on too much? Get a bigger umbrella and get yourself a nice car. Praise the Lord. <laughs> get yourself a nice vehicle and start to drive even through the mud. You have your own environment instead of being out there. You've been too messed up by the environment. Hello? Lift your hands up to whence to come as your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121 says, I'm not asleep concerning Israel. Guess what? He's not asleep concerning Thomas. That's me. He's not asleep concerning you. Hello? But are we asleep concerning him? <laughs> Some of us are. We don't have direction. We don't have guidance. That's why leadership in the church is so important. You need to have someone that's switched on and you can follow them. If you don't know what to do all by yourself, at least find someone that can help you begin to walk in a good direction. And the Lord wants to speak about that here. In fact, God wants to make many people leaders of your own right. How many have any vision to go into business? I'm waiting for all the amens that die down. Are you understanding my proper English? How many have any vision to be in business? Okay. All right. Do you want to be successful in the business? Do you want to prosper in the business? Do you want to struggle in the business? Do you want to wait too long for things to happen in your business? Guess what? If you're a preacher, you're also a businessman. Now, for years, I never took that title. In fact, I was so against it, you know. I, I, I don't consider myself that I preach for money. Money works for me. I don't work for it. I don't have to look for money. Money looks for me. Praise the Lord. Provision is for the vision. I don't consider myself that I work for a living. I work because I'm called. I do this anywhere I am. You know, I was in England for some time. I was given a million-dollar duplex there in Kensington, in the Kensington area near Hyde Park on the west side. And a rich person from uh, somewhere gave me a, a million-dollar duplex, and I used the downstairs as, like, the prayer room and the upstairs as the residence and the office. And um, I traveled out from there. I preached in over 200 churches, 200, maybe 300, in the time I was there, throughout just England alone. I never went to Scotland. I never went to Wales. I never went to Ireland. Of course, I went to Paris. Hello, you got you to do that. I went to Brussels. I went to Germany. I went to other places. But I just would go anywhere the door opened, and God so blessed me. I remember one day I went to preach in a church, big church, and afterwards, the, uh, the, the host gave me an envelope, and I didn't look at it, and I opened it later. It was 100 pounds, 100 British pounds. I said, what am I supposed to do with this? Within one hour, somebody called me, came with a, with a, a beautiful car, took me to a five-star restaurant, Amen. And put an envelope in my hand, I think about 25,000 pounds. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Private gift, just like that. So God rewards his own servant for his work. You don't have to depend on anybody else. Sometimes someone won't pay you for something you're doing, but there's a, a benefit you're getting from working with them that will come out another way. And then you walk just like this, and God will all of a sudden show up with his provision. But who does he do that for? I'm not done with this story. You think that's a lot? That's nothing. I, a businessman flew from Copenhagen, Denmark. He said, Prophet, 
with his accent. I want to I visit you. I wanna, what are you doing in London? I said, I'm having some conferences here. He says, can I come? I said, come over. He bought me the latest smartphone. That just uh, He bought me uh, a gold Gucci watch at Harrods. Come on, somebody, lift your hands. Don't get jealous either. And he had a very large check from his tithe account. <laughs> I was in Orlando, Florida. I had just finished a revival in Daytona Beach, Florida. The power of God poured out, and this, the pastor grieved the spirit, and the Holy Spirit said to me, I'm leaving one day. He said, I'm leaving. I said, well, Lord, I'm going with you. Where are we going? Don't leave me here. I'm going with you. You're going? You said you're leaving. Let's go. Where are we going? The Lord said, go to Orlando. I got to Orlando. I was given two houses and two cars <laughs> and large checks. And when I went to put furniture and things in the houses, nobody would let me buy anything. Do you know what that was? That was the harvest and a payday from God on all the work I'd be do I was doing in the other city where they wanted to steal the money and play games with the finances and all that. Praise the Lord. So God has a way to bless you. Are you getting blessed yet? And I was given a Mercedes S-Class and a Cadillac sedan DeVille, beautiful navy blue, uh, one of those signature editions, a four-bedroom house somewhere in West Orlando, and then a private uh, place with a private island, the top floor, a, a condo overlooking the, the Lake Orlando, and beautiful white egret birds used to fly up on my balcony, those huge birds. It was just like paradise. Lift your hands. God wants us to live in paradise. Paradise. Where was the place of Abraham's bosom? Where did they go? They were taken to paradise. The wicked were taken to hell, but the good ones were taken to a place. Why did they call it paradise? I don't know how it was paradise. If it was somewhere in the earth or somewhere in the spirit realm, like a holding place before we go to heaven, the people that died before Christ that God considered okay brought him to a place, they call it Abraham's bosom, right? But he, the place was called paradise. The word Eden means paradise. That's what God made. Hello? When Adam named Eve his wife, he called her Eve, which meant my delight. How many are not seeing enough paradise? Lift your hands now and be honest. How many are not seeing enough paradise, enough delight, enough splendor, enough wealth, enough prosperity in your personal life? Can I see your hand? You're not seeing enough yet. Oh, what happened? What, how are you saying, Jamaica? What, what happened? Good to see my friends here, Bishop and his wife. God bless you, my friends. I saw you come in. Blessings on you. What happened? What happened? Right? What? Something like that. What happened from the island? What happened? What happened? Every tenari, man. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, man. How are you doing? They say, not too bad. I said, why don't you say very good? What's not too bad? You mean like half bad? It could be worse, but it's still bad? Change the bad word. I didn't like that. I was telling everybody when I was in Jamaica, and they said, nah, how are you doing today? Not too bad. So okay. How about, uh, I'm, it's getting good, it's getting better. Praise the Lord. So your speech has something to do with it. I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to talk about the blessing of the Lord. Lift your hands. God is faithful if you're faithful. He'll also test you out to see if you're real or not. He'll let you go through some things. Look at old Job. Job was mentioned here. I love the story of Job. I don't love what happened to him, but I like how it ended up. He got blessed double for his trouble. He was already rich. The Bible says he was the richest man in the East. And he was tested. He even thought at one time he thought it was God. He didn't know it was Satan, but it was the devil. But at the end, Job 42, 10 to the end, 10 to 16, he got blessed double for his trouble. He had 3,000 camels. Come on, now he had 6,000. He had 7,000 sheep that he lost along the way. Now he got blessed with 14,000. And the family he had had a big problem there. Even his wife told him, curse God and die. I guess God pushed her to the side. 
Now the Bible says the daughters that he had with the next family, the next uh, season of time, were the most beautiful in all the provinces. Lift your hands. The touch of God came upon him. There was another one named Philip. Philip was the evangelist. Wow, this carpet is something. The, the evangelist was Philip, and God took a liking to him and gave him four daughters and then put his hand upon them and made them prophetesses. Can you imagine that? All his... Thank you, Mr. Macharia. By the way, stretch your hands out to this man. I have a word of the Lord for my friend. I'll get you later. I'll get you later. This is a very good man right here. I, I feel something for you. Not when I came in. Not now. Before I came in. So, it takes a lot to get blessed. Look at Abraham. Abram became Abra. Ham. H meant the H. H was the H from Yahweh. Jehovah. They were, the H was something about the name of God. Yah. Y-A-H. Jehovah. Yah. Uh, Yahweh. So God took part of his own name and slapped it inside the name of Abra Abram to cut covenant with him that he would then be made very rich. Do you know Abram was in his father's house in the Ur of Chaldees in Genesis 12.1? And he was just there. And the Bible never calls his father, Terah, a good man. There were moon worshipers. There were strange people. Ruth came from the Moabites. The Moabites were the wash pot. They were the cursed people. They ne God never said the Moab, you know, your heritage was good, Ruth, so you're a good lady. No, it's because she came out from where, listen, I'm going to tell you something here. Lift your hands, get ready for this. I'm going to drop it on you now. She came out from where she was in order to get blessed. So did Abram. So did David. David was amongst all the people, and they were wondering what he could do. Even Saul, that old fool, put his own armor on the kid and almost killed him. He almost fell down from the weight of it. So now this can't work. And David, to everyone's amazement, because he had been with God. Lift your hands. Because he'd been out there with God, swung that stone. He had five of them, and he hit the guy right between the eyes, and now he's the champion. Guess what? He did something that no one else wanted to do. He did something that no one else could do. Look at Solomon. I'll give you another example. Solomon was heard about concerning the fame of the name of the Lord, 1 Kings chapter 10. The queen of Sheba heard about him, and she was a rich queen herself, right? But when she saw Solomon, she fell out. When she saw the apparel of his servants, when she saw the joy in the house, when she saw the splendor of his palace and his kingdom, she had no more breath left in her. She collapsed. She fainted. Maybe the anointing touched her, or she just collapsed by shock. Lift your hands. How would you like to have a life like that when people come to you and they're literally shocked by what they see? Can it happen? I hope so. Can it happen? Ho hope is a good thing, by the way. It's not the best, but it's okay. It helps you. Faith is for the things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen yet. How many know God wants to address it? I'm, talking, I'm speaking here from the pulpit, the position of the Lord, to you, the people, okay? I'm not standing out in the congregation trying to figure things out in my mind about how, why things are the way they are. I'm giving you the position of heaven. Are you, are you, are you happy for that? Are you, are you appreciating it? Some of you just sitting there looking like, okay, I got you, I read you. Too much rain. Hello? Take your elbow and hit the person next to you and say, hey, you. Okay. If they look too quiet, you know, grab their wrist and see if they're still breathing or... God wants to make you have, he can't really make you do it. He wants to help you have an exemplary life. I want to lift both my hands. I keep telling you to lift your hands. I know I do that a lot, but I want to do it myself. Maybe you can join me. I want that. <laughs> I have to have that. I didn't suffer all I've suffered walking with Jesus all through the earth. 
as his disciple, as his servant, the things we suffer and go through, the warfare, the persecution, the attacks, the struggles, amen, all the issues that happen along the way. I didn't go through all that to not get blessed. How many know there's a reward for our service? Hebrews 6.10, so aptly says, A-P-T-L-Y, aptly says, which is appropriately, it's just, just kind of an abbreviation for appropriately, aptly I could say it would be short for appropriately. Hebrews 6.10 says appropriately, God is not unjust to forget our labor of love. Hello? Because we've been continuously persevering and ministering to the saints and to the people. Now, if you're faithful, you deserve a reward. And now you can work with this scripture. Let me give it to you. Isaiah 45, 11. Write this down. Isaiah 45, 11 says what? Well, let me start with, uh, let me start with uh, Psalm 84, 11. Another 11 in the Psalm. Psalm 84, 11 says, No good thing will God withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. Uprightly is not just your mental attitude or you avoided some sin or you think you're trying to live right. Upright means, it means more than that. It means standing up on your two blessed feet, amen, with your chest out and your shoulders back and your head held high and you're moving somewhere. A real key to success is movement. Even health in life is based on two things. The movement of the body and the movement of food and assimilation through the body. Without those two things happening, health becomes hindered. But 3 John 2 said what? Beloved, I wish above all things you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. I, I, I want to see that my children walk in truth, but I have no greater joy than to see that my children walk in truth. The apostle John said, 3 John 2, 3 and 4. I withhold no good thing. Someone shout, no good thing. Isaiah 45, 11. Let's look at that. The scripture says something astounding. It says, concerning my sons, or basically my people, what I'm going to do in the earth, I will show you what I'm going to do. But then he said, but concerning the works of my hands, you command me. Do you know a lot of people would be afraid of that? They think it's irreverent. I used to think that a bit. How can I command God? Like, God, I command you. Remember in the book of Job, in the 38th chapter of Job, when they, those guys were talking a lot of foolishness, and, <laughs> and the Lord got mad and came down and said, who is this talking these dark counsels? Were you there when I put the earth on its axis? Were you there when I hung the belt of Orion in the, in the galaxies? Were you there? And now you want to tell me how to do things? So... We think a lot like that. Like, how can I tell God anything? But God said to the one who's faithful, you can command things. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost wants to be the commander of you, but he also wants to put a commanding spirit in you, a commanding mind in you. Everything you do, you speak to it. Everything you want, you go after it. Do you know in the world, people that have big business, people that are billionaires in the world and they run industries, they don't even walk with God. They don't even know the Lord. Yet look at what they've done. Why? Because they made up their mind to do it. And many people in church, you can't make up your mind. First of all, you have to understand that prosperity is God's portion for us. Lift your hands if you believe that. Prosperity. I mean opulence. I mean abundance. I mean super abundance, the transfer of wealth. And I prophesy it's going to happen for good people, even in this land. The wealth of industry should not be in the hand of the heathens. It should also come into the hands of the church. The problem with the church, however, is that the, the is, is what we call the spirit of individualism. 
Nobody wants to work together. Everybody's out for his own game. Everybody's just trying to do his own thing. No one can trust each other, many times for good reason. I've learned not to trust people. HK, my brother, I've learned not to trust people in the hardest possible ways. Because sometimes you have, you're innocent inside, you have a soft heart, and you yourself, Bishop, have integrity. So you want to see everybody else the way you see yourself and the way you see God, but you'll have a rude awakening, Mom, and you'll see that people are not like you. They don't think like that. <laughs> you find the wickedness. People that could lie, and they come from the church. Bishops who are criminals with collars on, and they're in the church. I've seen them. I wonder what heaven they think they're going to. Let me give you a really dangerous scripture, which is really scary. We all need to be very scared by this and never forget it. In the book of Matthew, is it in the seventh chapter? I'm not going to time, take time to look for it. I'll just quote it. it. Jesus said, you, workers of iniquity, depart from me. And these are the ones that said, did we not preach in your name, prophesy in your name, cast out devils in your name? Guess what? People in the world don't do that. <laughs> I come from a, a family that was not Christian at all. If you can hear my testimony, I don't have time to share it now, but I'll go another time. But nobody in our bloodlines on either side of my family was ever born again that we knew about. I was the first one. So we thought that the devil, we call him the devil, the devil, we thought the devil was the guy in the Louisiana hot sauce bottle. Amen. With the pitchfork, the red suit and the horns. And the blazing eye, bloodshot eyes and the triangular tail. The triangular point at the end of his tail. The devil. What's the devil? Did we walk around in our life like, I'm going to cast out the devil. <laughs> I'm going to preach in your name. Whose name? <laughs> we didn't even know him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Did we not preach in your name? Pro prophesy. What's that? I'll tell you one testimony real quick. When the Lord called me into ministry, he appeared to me from heaven. No man gave me what I have. It came direct from heaven. I don't care who, what anybody, I had my experience and I'll tell you what happened. The Lord Jesus Christ himself, I can tell you how his face looked. I can tell you the color of his eyes. I can tell you the color of his garment. His garment was red, white, and blue. The most beautiful white the most deep royal blue and the most awesome crimson deep red burgundy you could ever even imagine. It's not even in this world. With several angels came to my house in New York. And the Lord, I, I tried to stand up when I saw him. Everything in my house disappeared. I was sitting upstairs in my house in New York City. I was doing some things and I, and I just saw him coming and I... I was frightened by the vision. I didn't understand what was happening. Everything disappeared. He walked up to me. I tried to, like I was going to stand up, but the presence, uh, his presence, I didn't know it before. I fell on my knees. I couldn't stand up. And he laid his hands on my head. He came and he said, my son Thomas, that's what he said, I am commissioning and ordaining you to be my prophet to the nations. From that day, the fire went from my head to my feet. I felt like I melted on the floor. I got up. I was a young Christian. I'd just been saved for less than one month when I had this experience. I'd ne I had never been to a church. So my point is this. A prophet. What is that? Hello? I'm intellectual. I'm, I'm graduate with honors. I, I'm master's and doctorate and all that. I've been to the greatest schools. I'm... I'm very brilliant about words in the English language. We might have heard the word prophet, but I sure didn't know what it was until the Lord himself came and told me he's making me one. Lift your hands. What you want greater than anything is what God can make you himself. It's great to have the impartation of the presbytery. Like Paul said, the, the laying on of hands and the prophecy of the presbytery, wonderful. But you know what? When it came direct from God to you, you can never deny it. You can never, you'll pay any price. A prophet friend of mine in London, England just wrote me a message. 
sent me an audio uh, prophecy two nights ago. <laughs> oh, I feel the anointing. He said, I had a dream and I saw a company of prophets. Even some of them were well known and they were all standing around in a circle. And the Lord came and stood in the midst and said, now I have some heavy assignments. Now who will volunteer to speak for me? And then in the dream, nobody, nobody, um, nobody answered. Nobody came forward. He said, but I saw you, prophet. You got up and you ran right to the front and said, I'll do it. Why would I feel like that? Because I know him already. Lift your hands. I know he's good. I know he's God. I know he'll protect me. Last week before you, you guys came, we had some preachers from South Africa. Great apostle, Ananias Rayla Kalela, who I preached with years ago throughout South Africa. He's the greatest crusade evangelist in the country. Uh, stadium crowds full. He's a blazing uh, fire, fire-filled man of God. And he, he stopped the service. And Archbishop Harrison was there and everybody else. And he, he began to talk about me and tell testimonies when we, when we were together. In another session, he stopped and said, the angel has come. And he walked over to me and stopped the whole service. Thousands of people there at the main church. And he says, Dr. Manton, I want to prophesy. And he began to say, you've walked through all this, but you have an appointment with kings. You have appointments with kings. You have appointments, and God's going to take you to them. Why? Amazingly, why would he do that? You know, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to tell you something here. Promote, I could tell a lot of, a lot of testimonies, but, 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 you know, promotion comes from the Lord. When he sees you're faithful in this and that, and you don't quit, and you don't relent, and you don't give up, and you don't look to the right or the left, and you keep going about the vision that he's given you. He'll give you better opportunities. Proverbs said, Solomon said, see a man diligent in his business. This one will stand before kings and not before mere commoners. Everybody lift your hands right now. I want to pray for you. That from this session right here, the fire comes on you. I'm going to drop this mic. But the power of God is not going to leave this place. I pray it. it's coming upon you through the words that I've spoken. And you're going to begin to see God begin to do something with you. A few things. I wanted to talk about business. But I'll, I'll do a business seminar in another session. We'll, hopefully we'll let everybody know. By the way, before I run out of time, let me say my website. Write this down. You ready? ThomasManton.com, which is my name, T-H-O-M-A-S. We find that in the Bible in John chapter 20. Jesus saith unto Thomas, hello, hi, and the last name is man, like man, ton, T-O-N, thomasmanton.com, and all our resources are there, events, social media channels, you can get our free e-dues letter, I did a teaching called the 12 laws of success, we're going to put that up next, very powerful message. It's free, amen, from our website, our YouTube channel, our Facebook, and all the other social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all those. Uh, you'll find them all there. But in order for you to be successful, you have to do a few things. I want to just throw this in quickly. You got to, number one, know the mind of God. Lift your hand. Write it down. Just write it down. Sorry, just write it down. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so caught up here. Know the mind of God. Exactly what the will of God is for you. You know, First John 5, 14 and 15 says, when you ask according to his will, he'll grant the petitions that you ask him for. The scripture says also in Matthew, ask, seek, and knock, A-S-K, the acronym A-S-K, ask, seek, and knock. And he said, some of you have not because you ask not, but also you, you ask amiss. In other words, you ask for the wrong things. What we need to be asking God for is like, Lord, what is it you want for me? Lift your hands right now and say, Lord, please, let's pray that together because God will answer by fire. What is it you want me to do next? 
Can I tell you the most important thing you need to know more than all the knowledge in the world and the universe, the heavens and the earth and under the earth, the most important thing you need to know all the time is one thing only. Can I help you? It's what to do next. Split second, twinkle of an eye. What do I do now? Huh? What do I do next hour? What do I do next minute? What do I do next day? And we need to open our arms wide and say to God, hey, Lord, help me. Show me what's the best use of my time. What is it you want me to be doing with my day to day? What can I do that will be the most productive thing in your eyes? Amen. Did you get that? Are you praying that with me? Number two. You got to structure your world into a system that's going to produce the vision that you want to see manifest and materialized. Number three, you have to be good at it. <laughs> you have to be good at it. <laughs> Someone says, I want to go into business, but will I be successful? We can't answer that. We have to see. Do you have the brilliance to run that business or that enterprise or that ministry or that organization or working on your job? Do you have what it takes to make that thing become a successful manifested reality? Or you need to have a lot of people that can. Number four, you need to have the right people around you. You need to have what I call the dream team. Another book I'm writing, the Holy Ghost gave it to me, I call it acronym TBOTB, which means the best of the best. Another one I'm writing about acquiring or receiving or working with or cultivating, we can call it many titles, the dream team. If you have the wrong people around you, they'll lead you in the wrong way. Your friends could be a prophecy of your future. Number five or six, wherever I am, your environment. My friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch, my dear friend for over 30 years, great, great man of wisdom, great man of God, great apostle. Everybody knows him. Dr. Mike Murdoch, he said this. He said, when your heart decides the destination, your mind will devise the roadmap on how to get there. But first, your heart had to decide the destination. And 331 times in the Bible, we find that decisions determine our destiny. Decisions. The Bible talks about decisions. You know, you can make a wrong decision and it can cost you so much. It could take a lot of time to recover from it. Some wrong decisions you can never recover from. You need to be very careful about your decisions. I was speaking earlier and I didn't finish, but the Lord's reminding me right now about uh, trusting people. The only people, the only reason men fail, or women, a person fails, the only and a person fails is because they trusted the wrong person. Lift your hand and say, Lord, guard my trust. Uh, guard my heart for how to overflow the issues of life. God told Adam, guard the garden. When he didn't do it, guess who came in? The serpent. Guess what happened? Adam was over there. The Bible says eastward in Eden, he made the garden but so Adam stepped out of the place and the serpent came to Eve and had a conversation. And the whole world fell because of that lapse on Adam's part. Lift your hands. Stay on your mission. Stay on the post. Watch the walls. Watch the people. And the Lord spoke to me something and he said, son, I want you to tell my people this statement I'm going to tell you. And I've done it on all six continents of the world. More well, 32 countries now I've been to. It got stopped by the pandemic. I was supposed to have already hit like 42 countries by now, but we're going to pick it up. And I'll say it again. I said it when I was preaching here in the conference before, Apostle. The Lord's going to give me a private jet in future days when I can hop from city to city without any stress. You know, there's perilous times coming on the world. You don't know what's going to happen 
with these things going on and the commercial air traffic and all that, subject to all this foolishness. If you have enough wealth and enough treasure and you got your fuel and you got your plane and you got your team and you got your equipment and you own your property, hello? You do what you want. You wake up in the morning and say, hallelujah, Lord, talk to me. I'm ready to go. You want me to fly there? Let's go. There was a show on a series I was watching on the TV and and the guy would say, uh, tell Edward to fuel up the jet. We're going. We're taking a road trip. Praise the Lord. How many would like to have that kind of dominion? It's available from Genesis 126. So the Lord said to me, I'll give you another example about trusting the wrong person. Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat in Chronicles, we see the story of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a multi-billionaire in exotic animals and property and ships. And even Solomon had his own navy. How far we're living from our patriarchs. Lift your hands and say, Lord, bridge the gap. <laughs> Let me stop listening to broke people. Lift your hands up. You listen to broke people and hang around with broke people and people that don't know where they're going and don't know what they're doing. They won't help you get to the next place. It's very sad. But Jehoshaphat had a downfall at the end because he got in covenant with a guy who was no good and it ruined him. Lift your hand and say, Lord, any relationship that has any potential to ruin me in any way, cancel it, expose it, get me away from it, get them away from me and get me away from them. Now, the Lord said this, your environment, I'll close with this, your environment is very important. Look around you, see what it is that irritates you, see what it is that's low, and say, Lord, I'm going to upgrade. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord said to me, son, your environment will either pollute you or promote you depending on what it is. Your environment matters. And all the things where people are making uh, millions of dollars off of organizations of this matters and that matters, I said, I matter. <laughs> I should make my own organization. I matter without the S. Or my environment matters. Or the plan of God matters. We should make movements on that. Hello? People in the world are clever. They run away with things, and the church is still sitting back. I rebuke it from off of Nairobi, Apostle. Let's stand together in agreement on this. I rebuke it from off of this city, off of this land, off of this people. People have been held back. They've been too stuck. They've been too backward. They've been too bound. They don't have a clue how to change what's around them. That needs to change. But yet there are a select group of people, usually they live in Karen or Lavington, like where I live, over there. There's some areas I can't stay at. My uh, penthouse that I live in never is without power. Why? Because we have a huge generator. If it clicks for a second, beep, it comes right back on within a second. I don't know what it's like to live without electricity. Why? Because I live... On that, in that kind of place. Lift your hands. How many would like to live like that too? No power outages. No floods coming in your living room. No mud outside your doorway. Lift your hands. It's available. There are people that have figured things out. It's time for everybody in the church to figure it out. Can we all stand on our feet? I feel like time has elapsed. I want to pray a final prayer. That... Father, in Jesus' name, engulf and overshadow your good people and cause them to see with your eyes and hear with your understanding and have the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that they can move forward in the things that you've ordained them to do and let it happen with acceleration right now. In Jesus' name, lift your hand, just pray in the Holy Ghost for me. Say, Lord, I receive. Lift your hand, say, I receive. All right, tomorrow I'll be back. And we'll have a prophetic session tomorrow. I will prophesy tomorrow. Tomorrow's the prophetic day. Lift your hands up before the Lord.
The Lord wanted to speak what he spoke right here, right now. And we'll be back at you again tomorrow. Pray right now and say, Lord, please, my life is too valuable. Time is too far spent. I must fulfill your big agenda and your big purpose now in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Let's receive the apostle, my friend. God bless you. Everybody that's been watching online, the Lord bless you. And we'll talk to you again. Amen. Can we give Jesus a big, big hand of praise for such a challenging word? Amen. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.